Good day, my name is Henri Wolof here. I'm with the Dogs of Awe. I'm a chaplain. And it's indeed a privilege to talk to you today. And I really want you to find time to listen to, the, to this message until the end and that you don't get distracted. I always try to keep my messages as short as possible. But I want to talk to you today on the courts of heaven. And I pray that the, the Lord and by His Spirit will just break open this word and that you'll be able to take something out of this, this word today and use it as a tool going forward. We need to understand that only God is a creator. Nobody else and nothing else can create something from nothing. Scientists and everybody else can take different things and put it together and manufacture something. But only God can create something out of nothing. And therefore, when Moses was instructed by God to build the tabernacle going forward for the temple as well, he gave very detailed instructions on to what must be inside the temple, how it must be constructed, how it must be built. Because everything basically comes from God who is the creator. And this also is applicable to the courts that you will find in the world today. Some, some courts like in America, and I think even Britain, use a jury. We don't do that in South Africa. But all of the courts will have a judge. They will have an advocate or a lawyer. They will have a, a prosecutor or an accuser. And then they will have witnesses and so on. Now, all of that also comes from heaven. It, that is why I'm calling this message the courts of heaven. And if you know and understand how the courts of heaven work, you will have a breakthrough in your prayer life. That is why I'm saying, please listen to this message. I'll try and keep it as short as possible. You see, the Bible says very, very clearly that God is the judge. God is the judge. Jesus is our advocate and Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And the Bible also talks about the cloud of witnesses. Everything that is there is what you will find in a court of law. And there's scriptures, multiple scriptures for each one of these things that I said to you. And remember, some of the scriptures have been written over 6,000 years ago. The New Testament about 2,000 years ago. So this has been written long before there was a court in, in South Africa or in the USA or Britain for that matter. Now I'm going to give you just maybe one text verse for each of these in the scripture to prove my point. If we go to 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7, it says, God will judge every sin and he will judge every sin no matter who you are. That's 2 Timothy 4 verse 1 and Romans 2. He can do this because he not only sees all that we do according to Proverbs 15.3, he sees the true intentions of the heart. So many times we can say something without really meaning it. And I can give you 76 scriptures right now where it says that God is the judge. But I'm sure we don't have time for that. So please believe me when I tell you that scripture says that God is the judge. Remember, Jesus also said, I did not come to judge. So judging is not the role of Jesus. Jesus is our advocate. Psalm 75 verse 1 also said, but God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts the other. It says, righteousness and justice are the foundations of thy throne. Psalm 89 and verse 14. Jesus claims, my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. That's John 5 verse 30. So now I'm sure I've convinced you just very briefly that the scripture says that God is is the judge. Then the advocate, which is Jesus, let me give you a couple of verses quickly. Um, 1 John 2 verse 1. My little children, I am writing these things to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So there I've just proved to you, we by scripture, we have a judge in heaven. We have an advocate in heaven. Now let me prove to you, according to scripture, we also have an accuser in heaven. And Revelation 12 and verse 10 says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now I have come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down who accused them before our God day and night. You will also remember that this is what happened to Job, where the, where the devil and, and God had a discussion about Job. 
So he is the accuser of the brethren. So I've proved to you from scripture, God is the judge, Jesus is, the, is our advocate, and the devil is an accuser. So how do we apply this? How do we use this knowledge that we've got? And what we need to understand is most Christians today, we pray as if we're on a battlefield. We bind and we lose and all of that type of stuff. And we rush into the conflict uh, uh, of prayer. And uh, many times intercessors do that. But, but we've got to go and look at what Scripture says. Let me read you what Scripture says in Revelation 19 and verse 11. It says, we see how Jesus himself approaches uh, uh, th th this battle. He says, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Look at the wording. He first judges, then he makes war. You cannot just go and make war if you have not judge because God is holy and righteous there are certain things that if you do them or you don't do them by act or omission the accuser of the brethren in terms of the scripture can go and accuse you to the father and because God is righteous he cannot do something about that until you repent until you plead the blood of Jesus over that which has taken place so the order is very very uh, important the other important thing, if you go and have a look at the Zondo Commission, you go and look at court. The, the, when you are the, 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 the witness, when you are the accused person, you speak to the judge. You don't speak to the accuser. You don't speak to the lawyers. You speak to the judge. You give your, 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 your case to the judge. Because it's only the judge that can make a decision to set you free or not. So that is why the word says in Hebrews 4 verse 16, you must come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain, obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. So we need to understand that when people in authority speak over us like a judge, that needs to be carried out. So I can give you an example, a testimony. For, for years and years, I prayed for one of my sons who him and his wife could not fall pregnant. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I need to tell him to go into the courts of heaven because his wife, his whole family on the wife's side said if she's not pregnant by a certain age, she's not going to get pregnant, blah, 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 blah. So the, the, the accuser of the brethren had a, a, a right in their lives. And my younger son, he did that. He went into the courts of heaven. He dealt with the matter. And uh, uh, my little granddaughter is seven years old today. So that's a testament. I can give you more, but we do not have time. So even in the New Testament, uh, 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 when Satan came to, to test uh, Simon, Jesus said to him, he said to him, Simon, Satan has come to test you. He, uh, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. That's Luke 22 and verse 31 to 32. So the, the enemy does come, he does go, and he does seek where he can come and destroy. The adversary is the devil. You can read that again in 1 Peter 5 verse 8 where it says that the, 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 the devil moves around like a roaring lion. I hope I've settled that because we don't have much time. I want to tell you how to deal with this. If you're having something in your life, you first need to deal with it in the courts of heaven. And how do you do that? You simply say, Father, I want to come before you as my judge. You ask Jesus in prayer, Jesus, you be my advocate. And then call all of the witnesses. Let the enemy call his witnesses. Let, the, let, let Satan come and accuse you of whatever it is. It does not matter. Let him accuse you. And here is what you need to do. Please listen to me. You plead guilty. You say, Lord, I plead guilty. Whatever the accuser of the brethren is saying, I plead guilty. I plead guilty, guilty, guilty. And now, Lord, because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross, I ask that my sins will be forgiven, that I'll be washed clean, that my sins will be removed as far as the east is from the west, and you will set me free from this that the enemy is accusing me of. And that is actually how it is done, and that is actually how simple it is. Please go and do a study of the word, specifically on this topic, on the courts of heaven. Go and look how many scriptures there are of, of God 
being the judge, Jesus being the advocate, and the devil being the adversary. Stay blessed and stay focused on the word of God. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen.